back to your school days. Do you recall learning much about your ears? Probably not. We learned that calcium can help make our bones strong, that brushing after meals helps prevent cavities. We know that regular exercise and low-fat foods help prevent heart disease, and that sun protection is critical to preventing skin cancer and cataracts. There are laws that require us to wear seat belts. Some states require motorcycle helmets. And almost everywhere today, we're protected against secondhand cigarette smoke. But what about our hearing? We didn't learn much about how to protect ourselves here, and there are no laws to protect us here, or from this. And sometimes your ears may ring after rehearsing here. But the ringing usually stops after a few hours, doesn't it? Uh, after uh, loud, intense rehearsals, you know, the ears would ring for a while, and then, and then they would stop. Uh, 32 years later, uh, the ears ring, and it doesn't stop. Uh, I'm a victim of, of standing in front of a lot of musicians, playing my instrument, and being unaware of the fact that uh, my hearing was being damaged. More earphones, more headsets, more powerful sound systems, louder everything. It is a fact that today we are exposed more frequently to dangerous levels of sound than at any time in history. And while good hearing is an important part of everyone's life, for those who study, teach, or create music, healthy hearing is critical to their livelihood. As a professional musician on stage, you, you want to be relating to the other instruments, Often, when you are playing without hearing protection, it is just a mash of loudness on stage. And I can put my, my earplugs in, and since there's less volume, I can hear better. As I moved into my audiology graduate work, I had people that I marched with that came in to see me and were reporting and, and asking me questions about their hearing. They were reporting their ears were ringing, that they were having trouble hearing in certain situations. And sure enough, we would test their hearing and we would see noise damage uh, that we could attribute back to their participation in, in marching and, and concert band even. To see that, it just broke my heart because I can't give that back to them. Most hearing loss is preventable, not inevitable. This was the message in Here for a Lifetime, a 20-minute program we produced four years ago for musicians and music educators. Here for a Lifetime demonstrated how we actually hear music and how to protect hearing over a lifetime of rehearsal and performing. Recently, we visited some of the instructors and students who were the first to adopt the Here for a Lifetime philosophy. Okay. Now, we know everything that we play is loud. There is nothing in this room that is soft. Okay, even when we play it soft, it is still loud, which is why we get yelled at most of the time. As I kind of grew through that process, getting my students into wearing the plugs as well, to where it is, put on your plugs, we're not going to touch the drum until we wear these plugs. Uh, just to try to train them at a younger age, so that when they get older and hopefully when they're still playing, it's second habit to them. And uh, me trying to model that for them as well, because that's important. Adam is part of a new generation of instructors, musicians, and audiologists who learned about hearing protection from the Hear for a Lifetime program. I use hearing protection because I'm scared. Uh, you hear horror stories all the time that uh, percussionists um, lose their hearing at a very young age, and it's something that I don't want to happen to me, especially going into the education business. Um, I'm going to be around music my whole life, and I'd hate to have my career end because I can't hear anymore. I first got concerned with protecting my hearing because as a musician myself, I would notice that after, after a gig the next morning, the ringing I heard in my ears the night before was gone. But then the point came where the ringing was just there all the time. It wasn't too bad, but then I started working for Modern Drummer magazine. I was interviewing a lot of prominent musicians and several of them told me really horrible stories about how their ears were ringing so badly that they just never had any peace. When I was 29, I was playing a Broadway show, a touring show, and uh, we had like a feedback incident in the pit, and just a big sound overwhelmed me, and I remember it hitting me really hard, and 
I was like, wow, you know, that, that hurt. And I woke up the next morning and uh, something had definitely changed. I mean, I had a ringing in my ears uh, and it was painful. It wasn't, wasn't just the ringing, it was that sound was painful to me. And uh, it was very alarming. And uh, I went back to play the show that night and it hurt, it, I mean, it literally hurt. And uh, I had to, uh, you know, to take a break from it to see if I could get some help, but it didn't get any better. As a band director, I feel that um, part of our job is to promote uh, healthy life choices and, and lifestyles uh, from their teenage years all the way through their adulthood. And using proper hearing protection is one of those factors that will allow them to maintain that healthy life choice. My first experience with hearing protection was with foam. And I just, they were always muddy. Um, I'd always have to take them out all the time to hear lower volumes. Then I switched over to high fidelity earplugs. Um, and found out there's a lot more clarity. Unfortunately, for many musicians, wearing hearing protection, is, there's still a stigma associated with that. And in my study, as, as I looked at the exposure that students had to hearing protection, was that they had over, almost 100% had tried foam earplugs. What it comes right down to is that they hadn't had access to high fidelity hearing protection designed specifically for musicians. Any child starts in music, you would try to give them the best. You send them to lessons, you get them the equipment. Nobody mentioned to us that he needed hearing protection. When we found out that in high school he already lost some hearing, that's when we discovered high fidelity hearing protection. And what was very shocking to me uh, was that it's not just the percussion players that have to protect themselves, but it's all musicians and every instrument. Noise-induced hearing loss is cumulative over a lifetime. Unfortunately, unlike those working in aviation, construction, or in other noisy work environments, there are no laws that mandate hearing protection for music professionals. For my graduate research project, I went into different band halls and had band directors wear a decimeter through a day of teaching. I discovered that not only did they exceed the safe limits, but they were four to 20 times over what they should hear during a day of work. If they were working in a factory, they would have to have a hearing conservation program and wear earplugs. But these regulations don't apply in school environments. Up, boys. Recently, questions about the long-term effects of high-impact sports, such as hockey and football, have come to light. These sports have been around for decades. So why are we just learning about the negative impact of concussions now? Up, thank you. As is the case with concussions to the head, the impact of sound concussions to the ear are often not immediately apparent. So how do we know that loud music or noise is the cause of hearing loss? From a characteristic pattern of high frequency loss called the 4 kilohertz or 4K notch, geneticists tell us when there is no family history of hearing loss, there is only a 1 in 1,000 chance that this pattern is genetically induced. These are the results of hearing tests from two brothers. On the left is the graph of David's hearing, called an audiogram. David played piano with rock bands, rode and repaired motorcycles, often using a very loud air hose. He did not use earplugs until later in life. His hearing test shows the 4K notch hearing loss pattern. On the right is the audiogram of David's brother, Dr. Mead Killian. Mead plays jazz piano and violin and has directed a church choir for over 30 years. Mead did not ride motorcycles and was an early adopter of hearing protection. His audiogram shows that he has normal hearing. What is it like to listen to music with noise-induced hearing loss? This is a simulation of listening to the same music with a 4K notch loss pattern. And this is what it would sound like with a severe, noise-induced, high-frequency hearing loss, which occurs when those most susceptible are subjected to continued noise exposure. Change from 
how does sound damage our hearing? When sound pressure is too high, the tiny, sensitive hair cells in the inner ear become limp, like spaghetti. Most of these hair cells may recover, but with excessive exposure, some of them will die, resulting in hearing loss. Everyone's susceptibility to hearing loss due to excessive noise is different. One band director could teach for an entire career of 30 years and then suffer a 25 dB loss at the 4K range, but another band director could teach for less and suffer a more debilitating loss or have that loss in a different frequency range or at a different time in their career. Anyone who wants to teach music for a long time jeopardizes their ability to make music, their ability to hear music, and their ability to be an effective teacher if they don't use hearing protection. How can putting earplugs in your ear help you hear better? Unlike foam earplugs, which muffle sounds, the specially designed filters in high fidelity earplugs replicate the natural response of the ear canal, as Dr. Mengini demonstrates. So if I played without the mute, and I put the whisper mute in, and that sound that you heard with the whisper mute is just about the exact same sound as I hear when I use, when I use hearing protection. So how much exposure is too much? The etymotic sound rule shows us that a clarinet in a marching band ranges from 93 to 119 decibels. At 100 decibels, you are only safe for about 15 minutes. At 109 decibels, for only about two minutes. But with high fidelity hearing protection, you can listen at 109 decibels for about three hours. As a kid when I was marching, we were never given any type of information about hearing protection. We just went and played, and the louder the better. And now, as we look back, you know, it's, I wish I would have known then, you know, what I know now. The kids that are marching in drum and bugle corps today, you know, when they become band directors, they're, they're now armed with the right information, and now they can influence students for 20, 30, 40 years into their careers, and I think that's what's really a significant advancement in the last few years. And it's not just your ears that are at risk. We had a drummer, a series of drummers coming in, and they had read in the modern press that they have to wear earplugs, so they go out and get the industrial strength foam earplugs in their ears. They come in five, six months later, and they all have wrist and arm problems. The foam earplugs were taking off so much of the rim shot, the hi-hat of the drums, that they were hitting harder to compensate. Poor hearing undermines quality of life, job performance, education, relationships, while hearing protection should be as common as wearing sunscreen or getting an annual checkup, for musicians, hearing protection must be a way of life. It used to be when I would tell a band member to um, turn down, they'd say, well, just turn up if you can't hear yourself. And I'm like, it's not that I need more volume of me. I need less, I need less, I need less volume to hear more. Our goal has been to create a new generation of musicians who understand the importance of hearing protection, just as most of us understand the importance of sunscreen and exercise. We put 25 years of research into high fidelity hearing protection. We know that it works, and we know that it helps people play better. But we're excited about the changes we've seen in the last two decades. Swing, let's trade eights. Let's do fours. One, two, three. At one time, musicians were seldom seen wearing hearing protection. Now even top-level drummers wear them routinely and tell their friends and their students about them. And soon, we hope a new generation of musicians will realize that hearing loss does not have to go along with playing music. It really is possible to hear for a lifetime. <laughs>